Hi, in this video, we're gonna talk about the 12 worst things about the Volkswagen e-Golf. Let's get cracking. So, I wanna talk about the 12 things that I don't like about this car. I love this car. There are lots of things I love about this car. And I also recommend you watch my video, the 15 things, 15 best things about the Volkswagen e-Golf. But the 12 things that aren't so good, I mean, uh, I think they should be all right. I mean, this is Volkswagen, after all. Um, I'd also like to hear from you. So if you've got a Volkswagen e-Golf, what are the things that really annoy you about this car? I'd like to know. I'd also like to say that if you're watching this video, you're probably alive and well. Um, so it is a first world problem. Nevertheless, it can still be inconvenient, I know. So number one is auto lock. So if you walk away from the e-Golf without locking it, it doesn't actually auto lock after say 30 seconds like many other cars do. It is quite inconvenient. So for the last 10 years, all of our cars have had an auto lock feature. So providing you haven't left the key in the car, it will lock itself after a number of seconds. So let's shut both cars and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just going to simulate an auto lock. So this box simulates someone walking away from the car, it's a Friday box. And eventually you'll see that this car will lock itself because it feels like I've walked away and um, it wants to secure itself. So there you go, the handle's gone in and the wimmer has folded back. Unfortunately with the e-Golf, it doesn't do it. So if you forget to lock your car, it's just unlocked. Now, thankfully we're getting used to this after 4,000 miles and we do lock the car. This happened yesterday morning at 4.15 a.m. As you can see, some chancer thought he'd come along and see if he could uh, open the car and get in it. Thankfully, it was locked on that occasion. More inconveniently than that though, he came back 10 minutes later stole our milk and my ginger cake. So number two is wheel spin. Now, I like the wheel spin, it makes me laugh, but it is kind of there. So if the road's damp or wet and you try and pull away keenly, the front wheels on this will just spin. So it's a combination of three problems, I think. One is the anti-skid software within the car. Secondly is the amount of torque it's got. This is a torquey car. Thirdly is the tires. As much as this is fun, now, and I've floored this at 40 miles an hour before on a wet road and the front wheels have started spinning, it can be a little dangerous. Uh, let me give you an example. So I was coming out of a petrol station on the A1, not for fuel, it was for sweets. And I floored it and it's a really short slip road. Uh, it wasn't the A1M, if you're familiar with the A1 at all. It was it was like the older part where it's short slip roads and uh, fast traffic. So I floored it, the car just span, people were looking. After about 10 seconds of wheel spinning, I was probably doing about 20 miles an hour. I was struggling to get on the A1 and get up to speed. Thankfully, I'd left plenty of room, but I mean, for a new driver or someone who's not used to this or uh, somebody who hasn't experienced a car that wheel spins, this could be quite dangerous. So I think Volkswagen is a company and a car man maker that is established enough to have resolved this, make changes to the anti-skid software. Um, the torque is the torque, is a torquey car, but they've the tyres on this car don't seem to help in any way. It's got Bridgestone Taranzas, I think. These are probably good tyres. They're not good tyres for a front-wheel drive talky car. In the forums, I've noticed that a lot of people, when they come to renewal, have changed the tyres, and the wheel spin problem has all but disappeared. If you're in a different market, so if you're not in the UK, if you're in the States, I'm, I'm keen to know what your e-golf's got, because... It just seems like a, a bad, bad decision with uh, the tyres on this car. This car will go back probably before we need to change tyres. So I'm keen to get other people's thoughts on what different tyres do for this car. If I'm right, 
the right tyre choice will get rid of this problem. Next is the frunk. I just don't get this at all. Let's have a look. Now, before we even get to the frunk, here's something that I really like, I've noticed before. And yes, we're in lockdown, so I'm filming my slippers. You can't actually, let's see if I can get my hand down there. You can't actually open the bonnet while the door's shut. That's a good feature. So let me show you what I mean about this. You'll notice how swiftly I opened the bonnet there. The reason being is I filmed this twice already without realizing my microphone wasn't working. But here we are, look, there is a lot of wasted space in there. Now I appreciate this car was built to house an engine, but look at all that wasted space. Here's what I mean, let's go over to the Tesla. So in the Tesla, all the bits that are mechanical are nicely covered up. They're all under here. But it leaves this wonderful frunk, so you can put probably a week's worth of luggage in there. When I'm out on rides, I put both unicycles in the front. And this looks like somebody who knows what they're doing has put that together. Let's go to the Gulf. This is a right dog's dinner. This looks like I've made it. I mean, come on VW. That's just been thrown together. I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, please take a moment to hit the like button. If there's anything you'd like to say about this video, you can do that in the comments. Um, and lastly, if you're not a subscriber, I know I say this all the time, please consider subscribing. 85% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed to my channel. It does help me out, it helps spread the word about EVs and it's much appreciated. So the next thing I want to talk about is the heat pump. So Volkswagen don't fit a heat pump to the Volkswagen e-Golf as standard. I think that's really stingy of them. So this is an outgoing car so you can still buy this car now I think it was meant to be cancelled but I think with all the problems with the ID3 they're keeping this running till about September-ish. Normally when a new car's out, that's called something like a first edition, isn't it, generally? They're a little bit stingy with the spec. They throw a few things on and generally people are really looking forward to it or have got lots of money, uh, buy them or lease them. By the end of its life, all the extras that used to cost a lot of money, a lot of them are actually on the car for free. They're trying to keep the car fresh as time goes on. So for Volkswagen not to put a heat pump on this car, I don't think that's a good move. If you look at the Volkswagen website, even Volkswagen confirm that in the winter, a heat pump will save 30% of the car's battery to do other things. So just put it on. It's not expensive. You're probably getting them for 50 quid each. The winter range on this car if it's really cold, can be about 100 miles. In the summer, maybe 140. So it is a short range car. I mean, we love it, but it's not a long range vehicle. So just put it on. Put the heat pump on the car Volkswagen. Now, if you're interested in Volkswagen e -Golfs and you haven't bought one, you can't tell, as far as I can tell, from the VIN number or the description whether it's got a heat pump. This car hasn't, it's our second car, so we're not too bothered. But if this is gonna be your main car, my recommendation would be get a heat pump. So let's have another look under the bonnet. So here is where the heat pump sits. So it just sits here. So if you're buying a second hand one, ask the person you're buying it from to show you this part of the car. So no heat pump here, Here's one with a heat pump. Hopefully you can see the difference. And now back to ours, no heat pump. Okay, so the next one is the electric windows. They are just really noisy. I'm gonna put them all down at once. If you put one down, it's kind of okay. But you know, like sometimes you get in a car, you put all the windows down. Listen to this, hopefully it comes through on the mic. That is really loud.
The electric windows on this car sound just like the electric windows I had on a, a Ford Escort in 1996. So next is the way the key turns in the ignition. So on our Golf, it's a basic one. So you have to get the key out and then do that and then put the key in the keyhole. So historically on cars, you have, when you turn the key, it kind of starts the starter motor. So this car hasn't got a starter motor. When it starts, you hear this sound. I don't know if you heard those beeps, but that's the car starting. But I find I'm almost having to dislocate my wrist to get to that point. So here's what I mean. You put the key in and then it doesn't start. You have to go even further round to get it to start. So number seven, and I know I'm completely out of context here. The reason being is I'm just editing a video and I realise that I missed number seven off. I'm in my summer house and I'm not using it as a studio for tax reasons at all, I promise. But number seven is the fact that the car goes into eco mode when you've got 30 miles left. So what that means is it restricts the performance and it restricts the heating. So this is fine if you've got a long way to go, but when it becomes a bit of a pain is if, for instance, you're only 15 miles away from home and the car has only got 30 miles of range left, rather than work it out, even if you're using the car's sat-nav, rather than work out that's actually okay, it then switches to eco mode and you have to then switch it back again. A little bit of a pain and just the tiniest of software adjustment would have sorted that out. Next is the lying temperature gauges in the car. Now, I don't know how they've got this wrong, but they don't really reflect the temperature within the car. So in the winter, for instance, um, if you set the car to be 22 degrees for when you leave the house in the morning, it's a lovely feature. So you, you, if you don't know about this, you set your car to be a certain temperature at your normal departure time, you come into the car, everything's toasty. It is really nice. However, the temperature doesn't reflect the temperature. So if you want your car to be 22 degrees, for instance, you've got to set it to about 27. It just doesn't really make any sense. And then when you're driving along, it, it just kind of fluctuates a bit. So you can have the car set to I don't know, 25 degrees and you might feel a little bit chilly and then you're a little bit hot and then you're chilly again. It's not that good. The next thing, now I know there's bad things happening in the world. I'm a realistic person, but the car net message. So every time you start the car and you drive off, randomly within the first few minutes, you'll get a message that says this. Now, you can't disable it. It comes on every time. It's just the most annoying thing ever especially in the UK, because we don't even use CarNet. We use We Connect, or We Don't Connect, which is another story. It's the app. It's a little bit glitchy, but I haven't included it in today's video because it's actually got a bit better lately. Um, yeah, so if you have got this message too, let me know what you think about this message. If you know how to turn it off, no one knows how to turn it off, please let me know. I'll buy you a pint. So my next beef is the charge port. Even now, when it's daylight, you can see that it's actually not that easy to see in there. Um, at night time, it is almost impossible to see what you're doing. Just a little light, there's plenty of space in there to put a light. That would have been really handy. Because this isn't a ground up EV, it's a conversion. The charge port is where the petrol cap would have been, and it's not always the best position for public charging. It's fine at home because you'll just fit your charger to kind of fit, get to the car. But have a look at the Golf GTE here. So you can see this car charging, this is public charging, and it charges through the nose of the car. Why can't the e-Golf do that? And what would have made this car I think would have been a fantastic selling point for this car is if you could charge it in two places, the normal place back there and also the nose. And 
it wouldn't have cost VW any more money because they're already making the GTE. So they've got all the parts for it to receive charge at the front. They've got all the parts for it to receive charge here. They've got the parts. How much more extra do they need for it to charge in two places? A little bit more BMS, a little bit more cabling. I mean, it's, I think they missed the mark with that. This could have been the biggest selling point for a car at this price range, two charging points. Now this one, the last one now, <laughs> is a little obscure, but a massive schoolboy stroke girl error from Volkswagen. So one of the good things about this car is when you put it in reverse, the passenger mirror dips. Let me show you. So providing you have the wheel set to L, when you put the car into reverse, the mirror dips down so you can see how you park in. It helps you park. This is a fantastic feature for if you're parallel parking. However, in the winter, you might want the heated mirrors on because it's cold and they're frosty. So let's put the heated mirror on. A brilliant function, comes as standard. However, when we put the car into reverse, we're in reverse, absolutely and nothing's happening. I don't really understand how someone missed that. Just a little bonus one as well. So the car's now in drive, I've parked the car. I've put the car into park and I've taken my foot off the brake right now. So I'm just getting ready to leave the car. I don't know if you can see that, <laughs> but it just moves about three inches. Well, as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got this far, I think you should definitely watch this video, which talks about the 15 best things about the Volkswagen e-Golf. I'll also put a playlist here to all the e-Golf videos. I'll put something there that YouTube recommends you watch and then a subscribe button here. See you next week.